take your coffee break with me. Come and take your coffee break with me. Come and take your coffee. Come and take your coffee. Come and take your coffee break with me. So welcome back to Coffee Break with Candace, everyone. Thank you so much for tuning in this week. I have a very special guest and I'm gonna let him introduce himself. My name is um, Ray Prim. Um, I moved here from um, Poughkeepsie, New York in 1992. Um, I would like to say I came down here for music, but it's, that's not the case. I just ended up playing music when I got here. Um, and I've been playing music in this town since 96, I believe. Playing in 96, I started off with playing as a rock band and then found my way into like a um, semi-rock band with horns and stuff. And now I'm, I'm, I'm my own kind of thing with with violins and and um, cellos and stuff like that. And um, and um, this is a great town to play music in back then. You could you could actually make a living. You could have a you know in New York and all those other places. New York and L.A. It's hard. It's much harder to live. You know. You'd have to have like two or three jobs, but I had a, I, I, play, I, I was able to be a full-time musician for like 10 years or 12 years um, without having a job and just playing music. So um, Austin allowed that. It was it wasn't that it wasn't that expensive back then, and you made money, and it's pretty good. Well, I wanted to be a rapper, but I'm not I'm not good at rapping. So I mean, I <laughs> suck at rapping. I realized that, and so. I went to a, I just happened to, my friend, they like Depeche Mode, and I was like, I n I'd never really listened to them, and, but if, you know, if somebody gives you free tickets or whatever, you're going to go see whatever, you know what I'm saying? Especially when you're younger, you're like, yeah, man, I'll go, I'll go to the concert. And I went to that concert, and I was like, man, this is, this is actually pretty cool, and the, just the, how the energy, that guy, the leader of that band, how he had everybody doing what he wanted and stuff like that, I was like, man, that's, that's cool. I didn't know what I wanted to do at the time. I was like, man, I I, I want to try that and whatnot, but I didn't really. I've never sang and everything, and really sang or didn't even know if I could write a song. So I went back in my downstairs neighbor. She had two Casio keyboards, just these little Casio. Cause yeah, you, you know Depeche Mode. Yeah, I know Depeche Mode. So, yeah, so they're all keyboard based. They're keyboard based band. So and their stuff is easy to play. Dun, 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 dun. So I was <laughs> doing that, and then with the bossa nova beat. Tuk, 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 you know what I'm saying? So I was like practicing that. So I was trying to practice writing my own melodies and songs. Man, I wish I had recordings of those. How bad were those? God, I wish I could have recordings of those. So anyway, so she got sick of me, but I couldn't play both of the keyboards at the same time. She finds like, you need to find a band. You need to find somebody. And so her boyfriend played guitar. And so what I realized, you know, sometimes you don't know what you can do. What I realized that I could do is if I hear chords and, 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 and stuff, I can sing, st make melodies up quick. You know, it was easier. For, it's like it just came to me. Not something I learned or whatever. And so he came over, he started playing these chords, and I just started singing. He's like, man, so like, who's, who, whose melody is that? I was like, I just, I'm just, I just made it up. So he wanted to start a band. It's like, so we started, started a band, and he was like, um, I didn't play any instruments at the time. And he's like, there's a band called King's X. He's like, He's like, I was like, but I was like, I don't know if I can play rock. It's like, I, I, I don't think I'm a rock guy. So he's like, you know, so he turned me, I went and saw this band, King's X, who has this um, black singer, and he plays bass, and his name is Doug Pinnock. And he was like, I was like, man, I love him. He's played bass. I was like, that's what I want to do. But then I was try, trying to play bass and stand up. Bass is, bass back, well, now they make some basses that are, that are um, lighter, but basses were heavy, like the Fenders. <laughs> man, those things were heavy. I was like, man, I can't stand on stage and play this thing. And it's like, you, we got to find a bass player. It's like, I can't do this. So, and I wish I kind of stuck with it. Then I would have been better, not better now. But um, then we found a bass player, and we started this band called Seven Stones. And then Seven Stones, I was, I was, that was the rock band I was in. That's the band I toured in. That's the band I did. And I, and I was just in the wrong music for the longest time, because my voice is not suited for rock and stuff like that hard heavy distortion all over me you know sure but it took me a while to realize that but i'm glad i did it because i learned how to you know tour and all that stuff and become professional and, and stuff like that and and stage presence and 
got all my nerves out on stage. I mean, I used to get sick. I used to throw up sometimes when I go on stage and get so nervous and stuff like that. But then now, I can't get nervous if you if I tried. Is that right? Really? Mm. Interesting. So, so a couple of things. One is how did that original your your start in the in the rock? How does that or how did that influence what you do now? Um, it keeps my mind open. I mean, like you know, every now and then I'll I'll add I'll add some element of rock. This new album has you know some heavier stuff on it. Don't 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 some riffs and stuff on it. But um, it just really taught me how to how to you know organize music. And, and Seven Stones really taught me how to how to get comfortable on stage. I'd say the most, mm -hmm. you know, get in front of people and and get that out of the way. And um, you know, I don't think it helped me. I didn't really cut my teeth into writing songs until I got out of that because we were writing a certain way. And then I had to, when I had to take on all the songwriting um, instead of writing as, because we wrote, we wrote as a committee in Seven Stones. And then when I left that band, I was like, well, I got to really start learning instruments and I really got to start coming up with everything myself because otherwise, you know, I, and I, even, but even with this band, I still take people's ideas and stuff like that because I want people to be a part of the band, you know? Like if, if there's a violin line, I used to write all the stuff and then I was figured, you know, this violinist knows her instrument more than I know it, you know? So what if, what if I just write the song and then sh I tell her, you know, why don't you write something? And then they'll write something and then, you know, I might change a note here and there and all that stuff. But, you know, for the most part, until they, until they know what I, to, until they kind of feel what, how I like, like things to go, I'll change a note here and there. And, but, um, I like to include people in the process because the more they feel included, the more the more they feel invested. Anything in life, if you feel invested in something, you're going to put more effort towards it, you know? Absolutely. I that's completely I like agree. Do. So that's what I like to do with the band. So I, that's that's what Seven Stones did. And then once I moved over to what I'm doing now and then realized, it, it, and it took me a while to find my voice because I was, you know, I couldn't sing, I couldn't, I couldn't sing the rock and I couldn't sing well enough to sing R and B, and and stuff like that. So I had to find, I had to be, I had to live with my voice and be like, okay, you know what? This is what the good guy gave me. Um, it ain't the greatest, but it's gonna be me. It's gonna be me. When people hear me, they're gonna know it's me. And and that's gonna be my style. I'm not gonna over sing. I'm not gonna under sing. I'm not gonna sing loud all the time. I'm not gonna sing soft all the time. I'm gonna do dynamics, and I'm gonna. Um, and say stuff. I don't, I don't like singing and just sing about anything. You know what I mean? Sure. It's like if I want to sing about something, it's going to be something I'm, it's going to be something to say. So, um, and that's, and that's how I, and that's me now. Mm. So what are some of the topics you like to cover in your lyrics? I cover everything right now. I, all my songs lately have been about, you know, the government and, and, um, and of course I sing a lot of stuff, a lot of stuff about black rights and black, um, oppression and stuff like that. But I, 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 what I do is I, I'm not, I don't like to, um, bam, hit you in the face with it, you know? Sure. It's like I use a lot of metaphors. I use, um, and I, and I always make, I always make sure that like I, have my, I, so for example, I've got well, one song, this new album that I just finished called Gray. And, um, I called it Gray because I feel like I'm, two things. I feel like I'm in the gray area as far as my music goes. I'm not, I'm not totally um, 100% for the, let's keep it real. I'm not totally 100% for the white audience and I'm not totally 100% for the black audience. I'm somewhere in the middle. Like people have to tend to like a little bit of both, you know, if they're gonna like me, you know what I mean? Sure. Like I don't appeal to completely to, I'm not completely rock, I'm not completely soul, I'm not completely whatever. I live in this gray area. And then so um, on that album, I have I have a song I wanted to cover because it was, it was about the shootings, the high school shootings, the, um, the 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 shooting down in Florida that one really pushed me to write this song. Um, so I got a sh song called Dear God. I was like, I was like, I want to be this to be a two part thing. And uh, I had another song that I wrote earlier. It's called When I'm King. Was about you know about the, about why maybe somebody would become a shooter. So one's one's Dear God is one's about being inside of school and hearing the shooter come, and um and, and saying your prayers and and making right with God and. And stuff like that and, and 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 asking god you know why me and all this stuff and that's one song 
and then I have the other song. Like I said, it's about the shooter. So, but what I do is this, what I like to do instead of hitting bam, like hit people hit, it's going to have a, a catchy melody. Like it doesn't, it, sometimes it doesn't match what I'm saying. Mm. It's really, the beat's going to make you okay. You know, you'll find yourself like that. But then when you stop and think about it, like, okay, what's he saying? Okay, now I see what he's saying. So what I'd like to, I, before you jump ahead, I'd love to hear a little bit of this song, Dear God. Down on my knees, yeah, I'm praying. I'm listening to the screams, just be saying. Lord, if you can help me out any day, yeah. I swear I'll be good. If it's time for me to go, then take me. Nothing left to know to show me. I guess we all gotta go if only I had more time. Had more time. Well, I tell my mom and dad I love them. If I had the time, I'd tell them everything they did. Something, something out of nothing, nothing. Find my little sister, a hugger. Apologize to her and my brother. Everything I did was just another way to show I love ya, love ya. If only I had more time. Mm -hmm. Bang, bang. All I heard Bang, bang As I hit the floor Bang, bang When is enough enough oh, Pretty powerful to put a song together the way you've done that. That whole album, that whole album is is has something, you know. It's like one I want it. That's another thing. A reason why I call it great because it, it 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 feels like there's a cloud on this year, you know. It's like you know when the gray skies are out and stuff like that. That's what it feels like. But like like I say, um, I mean all all those albums, all those songs are um, well, it's not gonna feel weighted. Cause I didn't, I don't want to hit people like that. You know what I mean? Cause I don't, I don't want, I don't want, if you, sometimes you, it's how you deliver the message. You True. Mind tell you that, you know? Oh, absolutely. It's how you deliver the message. You know, if you, if I make everything, I mean, I couldn't, only thing is when I'm King, I couldn't make that one. I couldn't make a shooter and all this stuff. I just like, it just wouldn't work. So I made that one dark. That That's the darkest song on the album. And how did but, you decide to come from that perspective? Of, of, because I was wondering, so what, 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 what makes people want to become, 
like be be that or you know maybe it's because they were bullied so this is this is what that's about about the kid being bullied and then at the end i wanted to wanted to hear like la 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 i wanted to to be sounding like like kids mm -hmm. taunting him you know where can we find your new project gray it's on spotify bandcamp um and my website rayprem.com you can awesome. get it there and, and check it out. Get the other album. See, what's crazy is I made, I, I, I dropped two albums this year. I That's impressive. I just started with one album just called Soul Writer's Diary because I like to call my music Soul Writer. So it's called the Soul Writer's Diary. And that was, that was our last show as a band, as a full band. It uh, was our CD release. Oh, wow. Yeah. And then once I found, realized I have nothing else, what am I going to do? I was like, well, I might as well work on something else. And honestly, I've got six songs since I dropped the gray. I've got six songs that I've written that I could be ready for um ready for an album. So I might drop another one in, in two thousand twenty. Just, you know, three times a was it three times a charm? Is that Third times a charm. Third mm -hmm. times a charm. Mm -hmm. Just so I can give some good luck in two thousand twenty. So I might drop that in December. And then release it like I did. Um matter of fact that's what I'm gonna do. And have another OBS in December. <laughs> <laughs> right around Christmas time. I love it. There's a song I'm writing right now. There's a song I'm writing that's, that, that's about 2016 up until now. Mm. It's called Only Thing to Do. It's a, it is, um, I say, I say a line. That song I can play you. Hey, right, you know what? Sipping on some iced tea yeah. and thinking about the time I first heard we done climb the mountain and swam the seven seas. Lord, for once, it's not where you come from, it's where you want to be, I suppose. Because when the hope is gone, the only thing to do. Hold on, yeah, when the hope is gone, the only thing to do, only thing to do, only thing to do is hold on, yeah. you're buying what he's selling, and selling what you bought, on the rooftops yelling, yeah, great things about to come. You can feel it in the air, man, right and gone wrong. He told you what you want to hear, yeah, yeah, but little did you know, uh oh, yeah, cause when the hope is gone, the only thing to do, only thing to do, only thing to do is hold on.
beautiful. I love that song. That's awesome. Wow. So now we're gonna we're gonna do um, my segment called "Who Said That." Oh yeah, yeah, that's right. I can win something. Yes. Well, you're gonna win something for the charity of your choice. So, I, I, quit still I, just on, like, I just like winning. I, I, that's obvious. But quit still on my thunder. So, <laughs> who said that? <laughs> I'll give you a quote, and then you, um, if you need it, I'll give you a clue. You get one guess, and you tell me who said that. And if you tell me, give me the correct answer, I will donate a modest amount to a charity of your choice. Now, what is the charity of your choice today, Ray? Frontline Foods. Awesome. Frontlinefoods.org. That's where awesome. Want, that's where I want my charity to go. Frontline Foods. Awesome. But you got to win first. I'm winning. Yes. Okay. So here's the quote. Not everything that is faced can be changed, but nothing can be changed until it is faced. I ain't never heard that before. <laughs> Give me a... Clyde! I ain't never heard that. Is this somebody I know? Is this uh, one of your cousins? No, this is not one of my cousins. <laughs> Although I have a cousin that could have said it, but they didn't. So not everything that is faced can be changed, but nothing can be changed until it is faced. And the person that said, the person who said that is an American novelist, playwright, essayist, poet and activist from Harlem, New York, who wrote eloquently, thoughtfully, and passionately, passionately on the subject of race in America. He is perhaps best known for his books of essays, in particular, Notes of a Native Son, Nobody Knows My Name, and The Fire Next Time. Only, see, that's the thing about the books I read are all vampire books. You wanna, do you want to guess? I'm, try, I'm, try, I'm trying to guess. I'm trying to think okay. of some black novelists. How many guesses do I get? You get one. So one? I, I, yes. I'm the one. You I'm the, the multiple choice. No, you could not. <laughs> we do not do multiple choice on this show. But thank you for asking. So, uh -huh. so like I said, he was. So I've already given you another. Okay, this is who I want to guess, but I can't remember exactly his his name. Uh huh. And they just made a movie about him, and I saw it. I saw it in um, Alamo Draft House. Mm -hmm. um, what was the name of the movie? Oh, I, can't, I can't remember. That's another thing. I have a really bad memory. Um, but he 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 was a he's a writer. Um, he's also an act a civil rights activist too. Mm -hmm. He wrote. Um, I can see his. I can see his face. I can see his. Um, his name he smoked cigarettes i remember they, they were telling the, st the, st the story about him um he was a writer and um he lived in paris too for a little bit he did you, you're thinking of the right person you just gotta give me I, just a gotta, name. I have to say his name dude uh, now gotta, i hang on, okay hang on hang on okay hang on because i can't remember his name <laughs> yeah i can't set that what's precedent his, what's his name <laughs> don't be calling anybody in them headphones trying to get a name <laughs> nah, um, <laughs> If I, if I, if I can't just like describe the guy. They just made a movie about him. Mm -hmm. yeah, I, th I think he just passed away too. No, he didn't just pass away. He's been passed away. Mm -hmm. He did. He is. Mm -hmm. um. But I still feel like we're talking about the same person. What was the name? If I get the name of the movie. If you get the name of the movie, one of his thing, one of his th one of his quotes, he's like, "I'm un un unapologetically black." It's one of the things he was talking. About. It's one. It's it's like that came from him. When I learned in the movie that they got that from him, um, that that like that phrase. That um, sound definitely sounds like him. But now you can't get you can't pass me a quote for a quote. <laughs> <laughs> Man, this is a strict show. Hang on, hang on. <laughs> This is supposed to be for charity. Come on now. Get That's, it is. I just can't think of his last name. What if, what if, what if we put like a, like, I think, I think having his first name is worth a third of, of the, of the prize. I mean, like a third of $25. Yeah. <laughs> I've never had anybody come on here, try to negotiate. <laughs> yeah. I say $7 goes yeah. towards what you call it. <laughs> Dar no. No, you not. better not say Darwin. I know it's not Darwin. <laughs> James Cobb. Yeah. 
Okay, I give up. What what is it? Shouldn't James Baldwin. Baldwin. Yes. Jesus Baldwin. Yes. Baldwin. Yes. Baldwin. yes. Baldwin. yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> and I and just thank you for a wonderful show. I'm so glad you had time to come on and hang out with us, share your music, you know, share the power behind your work. Because I mean, you really are doing something powerful. Thank with, you. Yes, with your art, and I I so appreciate it, and I know that others do too, and will when they see the show. Well, thank you, Candace. Appreciate you having me. See me. 